to Mandobug Crafts, episode 22! I am Mandobug, but you can call me Amanda if you want. You can find me basically on the web anywhere as Mandobug. You can find linked show notes on my blog at mandobugcrafts.blogspot.com. I want to say welcome to my new viewers. Hi, thanks for checking me out. And a big thank you to my returning viewers. Thank you for taking time out of your day to watch my show. I hope you take something away from it. So starting out with something I learned. This week I had quite the battle with my sewing machine. <laughs> so I was sewing away and my needle busted. And that has never happened before. And it's not like it hit anything. It just busted on its own. So I mean I haven't changed my needle since I got my sewing machine like over two years ago. So I mean it was probably overdue for a change anyways. So I got my little extras that came with my sewing machine and I went to change them and you know I should have looked, looked up how to do it either in the sewing machine's manual or gone to the internet but I was like you know what no it's like this I see how it works I'm just gonna do it and there's like a little piece that needs to be removed and like I got a screwdriver to do it but it didn't like fit and it wasn't until like I got I opened it and got the needle out that I realized I had this tool that I was supposed to use to <laughs> take the screw out um, but I did I found this later and so I got the broken needle out and when it was time to put the new needle in I was tightening it the screw to hold the needle in place and I thought the screw had tightened and had the needle in place and I let go and it was not tightened and my needle fell straight down the hole because I have a like bottom bobbin that's fed up through the top it fell behind the carrier case and I couldn't just open up the underneath and take it out because it was behind everything. So I had to take my sewing machine apart. <laughs> All because I just, I sh like, I in the future I'm going to cover that hole just in case. And I recommend that to anyone else. I don't, I'm not really sure if I was supposed to do that because I never checked. But I definitely learned the hard way to cover that hole so that the needle doesn't fall through there in case you let go before it's tightened all the way. So I did, I took the bottom apart and I just like photographic memory memorized <laughs> what it looked like as I was taking it apart so I could figure out how to put it back together. And so I took the undercarriage out and got the broken needle, or the, it wasn't the broken one, it was the replacement. Got the replacement needle out, put it all back together, screwed it back shut, cause there's like screws with springs and it was kind of fiddly, but I did it. And the whole time I was thinking, I hope I don't have to take this to a repair shop. Please, they're gonna laugh at me. So <laughs> I did, I got it all back together and the sewing machine actually runs better than it did before because in taking the bottom apart, I was able to kind of blow off a lot of the little pieces of cotton that is left behind from the thread running through the machine. And like I said, I've had it for two years, so there was a little bit of buildup in there. So it actually runs a little bit smoother. So um, I learned that and then I also learned that you know, if you've seen previous episodes, I took my, I tried my hand at free motion quilting on my machine, and that did not go so well. And I learned because I was missing two vital pieces. I did not have a darning foot, and I ordered one. I finally got one. Looks like this. It's got a little hole. And what it does is it hovers above the what you're sewing on so that you can freely move your fabric around. And the other thing was, I can't drop my dog feeds down. I have, I kept saying I have a basic Singer machine. It's not. It's a simple. I have a simple sewing machine. That's the name of it, I guess. And it does not drop its feed dogs. And, but when I found this piece, I also found this piece. This is the feed dog cover that you're supposed to put on the machine when you don't want the feed dogs to pull your fabric so you get that free motion. So <laughs> lots of learning for me this week. Um, I also, um, not sewing related, I learned how to do a new bind off. It's Elizabeth Zimmerman's sewn bind off which takes me to my works in progress. So I finished my first half 
of the Seahawks socks. And that's the bind off that the pattern calls for. So here's the first one. And yes, it's like a cheater sock. Oh my goodness, my husband only likes ankle high socks. So I had him put it on, and before I even got to the pattern that's on the back, he was like, no, 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 I only want like an inch more, so I had to start the cuff. So, um, really, I feel like I didn't finish a sock because it's so short. But that's how he likes his socks, so I just went with it. This is, I'm calling it my Seahawk socks, but it is actually the Time Traveler socks by Liz Sedmick. It's a free pattern. US Zeros. And I'm using the Premier Yarns Wolfrey Sock in the Saguaro Sky colorway. Looks like this. Um, and the bind off, see if you can see it close up, it, it really resembles like a long tail cast on is what it's supposed to. I didn't necessarily bind this off tightly enough, um, but it works and he, you know, I had to ask him like a million times, does it fit? Do you like it? Will you wear it? And he's like, calm down, it's perfect. So um, I haven't started the second sock yet, but I'm hoping to get it done by the Super Bowl, of course, because we will be watching and rooting for the Seahawks, him more than me. I'm a Redskins fan, and it wasn't our year this year, to say the least. Um, so, I also was working on this Viking hat. I showed you guys a couple weeks ago, but I hadn't really touched it. Um, this is the toddler size. So this is a $6 pattern by Mint Cat, and it's just titled Viking Hat. And um, $6 is quite a bit for a hat, but it comes from newborn all the way up to extra large adult size. So I thought it was really worth it. And I've made this before in the adult size, and now I'm doing the toddler, and I also have another adult size to make. So, I mean, I'm, I think I'm getting my worth out of it. Um, lots of sewing. All these pieces you see, all the dark ones, are sewed on top of the hat. So a lot of weaving it in, a lot of sewing. I still have more... These are what the bases of the horns, when I finish the horns, it gets sewed to them. And then these straps get sewed around the horn. So lots of pieces, lots of sewing, but you really get a nice, clean looking hat from this pattern. So I'm really enjoying it. Um, so this is in Hobby Lobby's I Love This Yarn. It's acrylic worsted weight in gray beard and gray mist. And I'm using US size G and H hook to crochet it. Um, and then this is new. I cast this on earlier this week. It is Capuchine by Adela, Adela, Adela. You know what? I'm just gonna put her name down here because I don't I don't want to disgrace it in any way. It's a free pattern and the hat the hat pattern is really cool because it's available in both bulky and super bulky size. So I got some Patton's Classic Wool Bulky in Black, and then I'm using my hand spun from the Mad Batter Bat. And um, so this is my progress so far. It is going to end up fitting like this. It's like, kind of like this, and then it closes off in the back. Um, it's a solid colored hat, but I wanted to use my hand spun, and I don't have a lot of it. So the plan was to do the ribbed in the front in black, knit with a, with as much hat hand spun as I have until hopefully I can make it to the decreases and then do those in black. Well, I've ended my first skein is right there. So I have this baby skein that I think I can maybe, maybe if I'm lucky, get another row or two out and then finish it in black. I haven't decided if I want to do that yet because the original pattern has like little dangles here to like close the hat up. It's more of a design feature I think because I probably wouldn't really tie it shut but just like the color pattern I feel like it would look better in the hand spun colors but even then I don't know if this is enough for that so I, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet so I've just kind of stopped. Um, these are on US size 8's and uh, I don't know, I really like the pattern. I, I think it's going to be nice. You know, originally I was going to use this hand spun to make something for my husband. And I'm glad I did it because it is, I don't know, you guys can't really see, but it in real life it sparkles. And even though they are kind of mannish colors, I don't think he would appreciate a sparkling hat. <laughs> so, um, so it's mine. <laughs> 
Um, I also have been working, um, I told you earlier, I was doing a lot of sewing. So I have almost completed um, this baby quilt, the, the piecing the top together. And I'll go ahead and back up to show that to you guys. This has been something I've been working on for a while. I started it, uh, I don't remember, a while ago. I guess technically this is upside down, but you probably can't see the print anyways. These are um, two and a half by two and a half inch squares. I think they were three by three, and finally being sewed together, they're two and a half by two and a half. I haven't gotten the border on the top or the bottom yet, but this is, I mean, once I get those on, it will be a nice little baby quilt. I don't know if you can see. Here's kind of like a close-up of the fabric. It's here. Maybe that's too close. Like that. I got um, a fat quarter pack from Joann's, and this is just a super duper cute pattern. Um, I picked up the backing fabric for it too. See that? I think it will go together well. Um, so I'm going to work on finishing that this next week. And then I also started another quilt. So being frustrated that free motion quilting didn't go so well for me the first time, I caved and I bought a Craftsy class. So um, I'm sure most of you know about Craftsy.com. If not, um, I'll go ahead and put the website at the bottom because it's kind of hard to say craft C. <laughs> but um, they have a bunch of classes in all sorts of crafts, I guess. I mean, it kind of gives itself away. So um, I went ahead and bought free motion quilting fillers. Let me see. Yeah, free motion fillers with Leah Day. And I had watched Leah Day's free motion quilting videos on YouTube because she has a bunch of free filler ideas on the web. She did a challenge that turned into a book where she made a new free motion filler every day for an entire year. And she has some really amazing innovative designs that she's created. And in this class, she shows you 50 of them. Um, the one thing I do have to say is if you haven't quilted before, I wouldn't want to start with this class because um, I was under the impression that she would show you how to make the quilt and then you would free motion quilt it together and that's not the case. There are instructions that you print out with the class that tell you the materials and tell you how to piece the top, but that's not in the video instruction. There is a supplemental video at the end of the videos that shows you how to baste and create the sandwich, the quilt sandwich, but it doesn't show you how to piece the quilt together. So if you've never done that before, I don't recommend starting with this course. Um, but just watching her video and her explanation, she goes through everything about free motion quilting before you even get to the quilting part. So that's when I learned I needed the darning foot and that I most likely already had a feed dog cover. Um, and so I, this is my second attempt at free motion quilting and it's way better than my first attempt that I had in a couple episodes ago. So this is stippling. It's just random curves that don't cross each other and that's my back no broken nastiness. So um, just taking this class I've learned a lot and I think it's really worth every dollar, every penny. Um, the quilt that you make is a bunch of squares that are blank like this. So I've already cut all my, well maybe it's better to show you from this direction. I've already cut all my solid color squares out and then you put two inch borders um, a solid background color around all of them and then you piece them together. So um, I'm working on that. I, I accidentally messed up when I was cutting them because I bought exactly the amount of fiber or fabric that I needed and I accidentally cut one too short so I had to sew it together and it's got a seam in the middle but I'm hoping by the time I free motion over the top of it you won't really notice because that's why these squares are one solid color is because you want to show off your free motion quilting over the top of the fabric and if it's busy you won't see it which brings me to um, my backing she said that when you do like really fancy free motion quilting designs on the top of a quilt you want a busy 
fabric for the back of your quilt so that it doesn't necessarily show through. So with all my colorful squares, see if I can show you guys, all my colorful squares, I chose this busy back. And so I think it's going to be a cute quilt and I can't start, I can't wait to start filling it in so but I still have to finish piecing it together which was kind of a disappointment because you know I bought the class I bought all my equipment and I was ready to just start going and I can't get so um, but I am excited so moving on to oh I'm still on works in progress oh this is gonna be a long episode I'm sorry I will try to cut out anything that's not important um, well not not this not important I'll try to cut out boring stuff and not chatter so much. Um, so my last finish, or my last work in progress, is um, my spinning. So this is two ounces of my hand dyed domestic wool that I got with my spinning wheel from Winterwood Farm. Um, and I was just trying to spin it thin. And I, I, you know, it's a lot thinner than my first time around, but it's still not where I wanted it. I wanted to spin a fingering weight and um, this just turned out a little too thick. And I'm also having a problem that it's slightly overspun because I'm having issues chain plying it. So that takes me to my finished objects. Um, I, this, so this was two ounces. I spun another two ounces and I ended up chain plying it on my spindle because I couldn't get it to chain ply on my wheel because it was twisting up on itself because it was overspun. So, um, that worked well on my spindle though, so I just cha I spun it on my wheel and then chain plied it on my spindle. And this is two ounces um, of the hand dyed domestic, it's about a worsted weight, and I got um, 78 yards. So um, I really like the way that this yarn turned out, I'm really happy with the fact that I decided to chain ply it because I like the way the colors turned out. So I will be chain plying this on my spindle as well until I figure out how to get my singles to not be so overspun so that I can chain ply on my wheel. I mean I prefer a traditional three ply but you know sometimes when you're working with color um, you may get a better result when chain plying so. I mean and especially chain plying on a spindle you can really control where those color changes are because it, you can go at your own speed. Um, so for my other finished object, I spun some more of the undyed natural um, domestic wool on my wheel. And um, I got this guy. So this is regular three ply, this is chain plied, um, and it's just like my first skein except for this three ply now. So it this actually turned out looking worse than my two ply, um, but wait. Okay, yeah, this is my three ply. Um, it's it, I had to make sure because they look the same. They're like the same oh, weight, so um, you really kind of have to be like, is this two ply or three ply? It's three ply, um, and it's a worsted to bulky weight. Um, I didn't count my yardage on this or this, so I will eventually. Um, and this one, the chain plied. This is how I knew not to chain ply my hand dyed because it was over, the singles were overspun and I got these like nups in it where they just twisted up on themselves as I was trying to chain ply and they're like little stalagmites, stalactites. <laughs> so I, I knew to go ahead and just chain ply the colored yarn on my spindle because I have not perfected my singles yet on the wheel and you know I'm, I'm still really new on my wheel so that's not surprising. Um, so moving on to check it out. So I got a request to talk about how I store slash prep my fiber. So um, as far as fiber prep goes, um, there's not a lot of prepping that goes in that I do with the fiber before I spin it. Um, the only time I really think about how I prep my fiber is with color and it depends on the way it was dyed. Um, I have yet to buy a completely solid color changing fiber yet, so um, I've never split the fiber lengthwise. Um, but that is one way you can do it, try to split it, if you're going to do two ply, split it in half, 
um, if you're going to do three ply, try to split it into thirds equal in weight so that you, your singles match up in color. Um, but normally I get some sort of speckled or kettle dyed variety of fiber and so you can really prep it however you want. I will randomly just pull pieces off um, of any size or length. Whatever feels right feels good to me at the time. Um, and I don't pre-draft it. Even on the wheel, um, I don't, I don't pre-draft it. Um, I just kind of, I don't know, hold it kind of further away and pull from the top as I spin. So um, I, I've seen other spinners who like to do, like get really skinny long strips and kind of pre-draft it and I, it seems to make the spinning easier and smoother. I just, I don't know, I just don't. Um, but as far as storing my fiber, I think the question was more related to how I braid it because, so like here's some domestic wool that I have. Um, I had it braided, I unbraided it to show. Um, so yeah, I mean I've, I've separated it into four ounces because that's really kind of my bobbins hold about two ounces and I don't want to overfill them. So um, I don't want to be trying to spin more than my bobbins can hold. So I feel like four ounces is a good size for what I'm working with. Um, so I, I split my yarn into four ounce batches. And then for storing, because I do have like a pound and a half of this, um, what I did instead of just leaving it up like a ball or rolling it up, I braided it. So there's three ways you can do it. Let's see if I can back up. You can take one end and then kind of have your loop at the top and drop it down and have a loop at the bottom. And then it'll, you'll have three pieces of fiber and you want to make them even. So it's really hard to show you, but I have one end, the loop, and then at the bottom is the other end and another loop. And what you can do is you can fold one of the ends over and you can just start braiding the pieces together. And when you do that, it's you kind of have to pay attention to your piece that doesn't have the loop. So this one is not looped. And that's the one that you're going to be weaving in and out of your loop to braid. But I find that a really confusing method and it takes a really long time. So what I do, and I'm sure other people do this too, is being a crocheter from the start, I crochet my fiber. So I start out with a loop and I pull up a loop and I pull up a loop and I just keep doing that. And I just keep going. And I like to keep, as I do it, I like to keep the loop over my hand as tight as possible. So don't pull up too big of a loop. And you just keep pulling the fiber through the loops. And you go and you go and you go. And then eventually, you'll get to the end. And when you get to the end, I just kind of leave it like this. Because it's not, it's not like it's going to come undone. And you have nice braided fiber. Well... You can just tuck that in. And so you have nice braided fiber and it stays how you want it. You can roll it up, whatever. Um, but my favorite thing about this is when it comes time to spin it or undo it, you just grab the end. Oh, it's got to be the right end. So you have to make sure you grab the right end. But grab, right? Oh my goodness. There we go. You grab it and it comes undone. Because it's like chaining in crochet. It just undoes itself. So, that's how I prep my fiber for storage, I guess you could say. So I hope that answered the questions. If not, go ahead and write me back in. Let me know what I was misunderstanding. <laughs> I really love to take requests from you guys and know what you want to know. Um, I'm definitely not an expert, but I can share what I've learned and my experiences. So I went ahead and opened a Ravelry thread for requests. If you have one, go ahead and put it in there and I will try to put it in the show. So, um, so also for check it out, I got goodies in the mail. So my Sunrise Fiber Company's dessert yarn 
club of the month came in for January. So if you're participating in that and you haven't received your yarn yet, fast forward about a minute or two. Um, so this is what I received. I got this yarn, this beautiful, lovely yellow colorway, which was inspired by this recipe. It is champagne cupcake with champagne buttercream. And when I do decide to cast this on, I will be making this recipe. So I'm really excited about that. And oh, and this is in the classic sock um, base. So, um, and then it also came with goodies. So this little goodie pack, crinkling, I'm sorry, is, excuse me, cereal fly soaps. Life can be stinky, wash up. And it's got all our contact information on the back. And this, I don't want to, looks like an amazing bath bomb. It says it's a bath fizzy. And it says exactly all of its ingredients. And it says it is a tingling treat for your skin. And then it also came with this little bar of soap. So... It was a very nice little package to receive in the mail. Um, nice little dessert yarn club. And um, the cool thing about um, Sunrise Fiber Company's dessert club is that you can choose to just be a member for a month, three months, or more. And you also have the option of re like recurring your subscription. So you can buy a month and then click yes every month charge me again and renew my membership. So um, I thought that was a really great option. Um, she's on Etsy. Of course, I will link to her shop on my blog. And she also has a Ravelry group. And then I also made a Eat Sleep Knit order. So um, yay, I won in the lotto. <laughs> I got $5 store credit, so we. And um, if you're an Eat Sleep Knit shopper, then you already know they have the Yarnathon again this year. And this year they have teams. There's four teams. And I'm on Team Robo Knits. And so um, there's teams activities in the Eat Sleep Knit thread. There's um, knit, knit alongs. And this month is something new to you. But you have to knit with their yarn. So that's the catch. Um, but you get yards towards your team's group for doing that. So, I mean... I feel like it's a nice little fun game to play. Um, so I ended up ordering from them um, some Shibui sock in the Pagoda colorway. So you know these are going to be a pair of socks for me, right? <laughs> I'm so excited. I need my pumpkin socks. Pagoda. Uh, it's pumpkin to me, whatever. <laughs> I guess they're showing up a little... A little Okay, there we go. If I just get close to the camera, you see the true color. Back here, they're showing up kind of red, and they're not. They're like a burnt orange um, with some lighter colored variation. Um, then I also ordered some Lorna's Laces Shepherd Sock in the Fresh Stripe colorway. Ooh! Yes, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and spoil this. Um, I bought this yarn specifically to make a scarf or shawlette for Josh's mom. So, cause I know these are her favorite colors. So, yay! <laughs> um, I was gonna make a scarf cause she does really like scarves, but you can wear a shawlette like a scarf and I feel like there's more patterns that I like um, that are shawlettes over scarves. So that's probably what I will make. Um, and then I also ordered um, some blue skies alpaca, blue sky alpacas, is that what it is? Blue, yeah, Blue Sky Alpacas Worsted Cotton. And this is in the 642 colorway, but um, Eat Sleep Knit calls it True Red. So, um, which this takes me to um, current events. So I have joined another knit along. No surprise. <laughs> um, so I joined the 2014 Sampler Mystery Knit Along by Marie Seguerez. It's eight dollars for the pattern. I missed when it was half off, um, but so it's eight dollars now, and you get a clue every two weeks for an entire year. 
and they're sampler squares and if you just make one of each sampler you will have 25 squares and it's enough to make a baby blanket so um i guess i guess this is kind of personal but i feel like i can share um josh and i will be trying to start a family this year so um hopefully i'll have a baby blanket for a baby <laughs> that is the goal so um, I decided to do, it's going to be 5x5 five five for the 25 squares, so I'm going to do the top row in red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, I'm going to have a whole rainbow blanket. So, and I think I'm actually putting a sixth row in, I'm going to have to make five extra squares so I get that full rainbow. So I've, um, that was my solution to not have to buy all the yarn at once, because <laughs> I didn't want to have to shell out that much money so quick. So, um, I just bought my red and um, I finished the first sampler and so I'm behind but um, I'm okay with that um, so where's my square oh here it is so here's the first sampler um, and if you are doing this and you don't want to see you may have to fast forward but um, here's the first sampler square now the pattern is written for si US size sevens and you're supposed to get a six by six square. I'm using US size, I wrote down eight, but that's not right. I think it's six. Yeah, I'm using US size six uh, because this worsted weight's a little fatter than what she was using. Um, I'm using US size six um, and my squares are ending up to be eight inches by eight inches, which is fine by me. It'll just be a little bigger baby blanket. Um, I've started the second block, but I get very far. <laughs> so, um, but I, I think the the first two samplers are the only two that are out, so I definitely can catch up, and I'm not that far behind. So let's see if I can keep up through the whole year, right? <laughs> I hope so. I tried the the crochet block a month along last year, and I only made it to March. So. <laughs> Uh, but these squares are much smaller and take less time, so hopefully I can keep right up with everybody. Um, and then, you know what? I skipped one of my goodies in the mail, so I'm going to go back. Um, I received this order that I, it's yarn I actually bought for uh, Lindsay of the Knitwin Podcast, because I love her, and she loves dragons. So, um, I watched the Penguin Soup podcast, and, um, it's a nice little podcast, you should check it out, Jenny's really funny, um, and she dyes yarn, and she does a bunch of themed colors, and this month she's doing The Hobbit, and each week she's having a different colorway, um, about the Hobbit. So Lindsay absolutely loves the Hobbit and she absolutely loves dragons. So when I saw this yarn on her podcast, I had to get it for her. So this is Penguin Soup in the Tuxedo Glitz base and the colorway is Smog or Smaug, however you say it. I'm not really into the Hobbit, I know, blasphemy. But, <laughs> um, I, you know, I watched the three Lord of the Rings, and I fell asleep in every one, so, like, not that, not that it wasn't a good movie, it just was a very slow-paced movie, so I just kind of left that at that. But anyways, here's the yarn. I wanted to share it before I give it to her tomorrow. So, it's, oh, it's such a gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. And if I can get up close, oh, yep, yeah, you can see the glitter. It's got gold flecks in it, and I absolutely absolutely love this colorway and I think Lindsay will too and it came with this awesome stitch marker the dragon so I think Lindsay will love it on a little tag so um had to share that <laughs> um so back to current events um I also have the January finished objects thread going on in the Ravelry group Manabug Crafts and um, there's a lot of submissions, and they're looking awesome. So um, it's almost the end of the month. Get it in while you can. And then I am st also have the uh, my birthday giveaway, which is going to be going on for another three weeks. So you don't have to hurry to enter to that one. But just check it out in the group for the rules, I guess. I I'm not a big fan of rules, but 
they do kind of exist for a reason. So, um, and then upcoming events, um, I joined this podcast host group on Ravelry, and they have really awesome threads about everything, and a lot of people who use Blip TV to do their podcasts are running into iTunes problems, because Blip isn't going to forward their podcast feed to iTunes anymore, and because of that, they're lurking for, l- lurking, they're look. I'm lurking, <laughs> they're looking for alternate ways to get their videos to iTunes. And uh, Joanna Springs from Knitspin Farm posted a really great link on how to use Google Drive to host your videos to get a feed to go to iTunes. And they do 15 megabytes, I think it is, for free. So I will actually be able to upload my videos to Google Drive and get them on iTunes. So that's good news. Um, If you watch me solely on YouTube and would prefer to watch on iTunes, that should be up and coming. It will take me a while to upload the videos because they are a pretty good size. But um, yeah, that is that is up. That is coming soon. (laughs) So uh, other than that, sorry this episode was kind of long. I really need to kind of cut back on my amount of content, huh? Uh, I don't want, I don't want to have episodes that are longer than 30 minutes and I keep doing it. So, uh, I'm sorry. I apologize, (laughs) but I don't know guys. I don't want to say bye, but I have to. So I will see you next week. Happy crafting. Bye.